Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. I'm Dan Lamihu, County Board Chairman, uh, co-host of this show with Anna Pien, our Administrative Coordinator. Uh, we bring you this monthly show to bring you the services and departments of Sheboygan County and the, the services that we provide to the citizens of Sheboygan County. And this month we have with us Roger Lanning, our Highway Commissioner, and we're going to be talking about the Highway Department a little bit, and we're getting to the time of year. We're taping the show in December, but we're going to be showing it in January. Hopefully we'll have some snow by then for some people. Some people think hopefully we'll have snow. Others are just glad we don't have any yet. But uh, I'm sure sometime this winter we're going to get some snow. And, and, and a good portion of our, our half-hour show today, we're going to talk about uh, the job that the highway department does with snow removal. But uh, first of all, uh, Roger, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the position of highway commissioner? OK, thank you, Dan, Adam. I've been highway commissioner since uh, 1987. Uh, as you know, the highway commissioner position is uh, appointed by the county board supervisors. It's presently a term of uh, a four-year term. And so I've been able to convince you guys to keep me around for a few terms here. Uh, and the, uh, the role of the highway commissioner, of course, is, is to direct the operations of, of the county highway, county highway department. And the department itself, uh just give us a, just a short overview of the mission and roles of the department. Okay. The, uh, the role of the highway department, of course, is, is to maintain the, 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 the county roads. Now, some people confuse when, when they see our, our equipment out on the roads on the state and the town and on the county roads. The primary responsibility is with the county roads, which are the roads with the letters. Of course, the state roads are the ones with the numbers, and the town and village roads are the ones with the names on them. So, but to, to maintain, to, to, for example, plowing and picking up uh, the, the trash and mowing and uh, overall maintenance, be it blacktopping or, or any maintenance uh, associated with the county roads, that's the primary responsibility of the county highway department. And how many employees do you have in the department, and, and how is it organized in other sheds all? We see these sheds all over the county, and, and how, how do you organize the department? They're, um, we're organized into, we're broken up into six uh, uh, maintenance areas around the county. Uh, the folks listening probably know that we have, uh, the, the main shop, of course, is in Sheboygan on 23rd Street, where the administration offices are, and the, uh, the vehicle repair shop, and, and all the supplies and things are at that location. And then the outlying uh, garages are, there's one near Howard's Grove, and Elkhart Lake, Plymouth, Cascade, Adel, and one uh, along I-43 south of Sheboygan. And when we're talking about the, the snow removal part of it, about each of those district garages maintain in total about 185 to 210 miles during their winter uh, operations. So if, if, in, if a highway employee works at one of those sheds, that's where he reports for work every day and, and, and he works out of that shed? Yes, during, during the winter months, that's the way it works. During the summer, we, of course, have our, our various construction crews, and then we kind of split up uh, into the different crews. Of course, uh, as everybody knows, that we have two seasons, winter and, and construction, and where we, they see the orange barrels. Fortunately, this year, we've been able to extend the construction a little longer. You mentioned uh, the number of miles that each shed would cover for snow removal. How many miles of county roads do we have that okay. you take care of? We have 452 miles of, of county roads. Total in the county for all roadways is about 1,500 miles. So, but with the arrangements we have with the other municipalities, we maintain about 1,150 out of that 1,500 total. And the rest, of course, would be city and village uh, streets, and there are some townships we don't uh, do winter maintenance for. How, how does that compare to, to other counties? Is, is that high, low? Well, uh, other counties, is, uh, as far as the number of miles of county roads, Sheboygan has one of the higher numbers of uh, county roads that are still maintained by the county. And most other counties have more local roads, or, or township and village and city. And, and you mentioned uh, plowing some of the, contracting for plowing some of the roads for the municipalities. Um, could you just expand on that a little bit, the work you do with the municipalities and how that, sure. how that works? Well, let's start with, with the State Department of Transportation. Uh, our area is uh, directed by uh, the Green Bay District Office. And was, when you go over the line in Ozaki County, uh, that's handled by the Waukesha, which is District 2 of, of the State Highway Department. 
And the State Highway Department uh, works on a, on a, coordinates with the counties and pays the counties to maintain, uh, do the routine maintenance on, on the state and interstate roadways. So we, do, we act as a, I don't, for lack of a better term, contractor with the State Department of Transportation to maintain their roadways, like I mentioned, for routine summer maintenance, mowing and whatnot, and snow plowing. And with the townships, it's, it's a similar scenario. We're, uh, most of the townships, uh, we do work for 12 out of the 15 townships when it comes to their snow removal, their sanding, salting, snow removal, and uh, their routine maintenance. So we, it's, it's on a time and uh, materials basis. When you say routine maintenance, how, how root, or, it seems to me that you actually build roads. That's, I mean, you're not just filling potholes right. around the county, but you actually build roads right down We're, to the base. Right. Uh, some of the operations that we have, other than routine, when I mentioned the, the summer work, I mean, we have a gravel crushing operation. Uh, we produce our own uh, asphalt and blacktop. Uh, of course, we have our marking and, and signing crews to do put all the signs up and mark the center lines and the white edge line, and we, uh, bridge maintenance and bridge inspection. Uh, Concrete repair, like on the on the on the concrete state roads where the joints uh, have a problem, we go in and repair those. So the and of course paving and everything. So we we basically full service uh, county when it when it comes to providing the services to the uh, municipalities and ourselves and the state DOT. <clears throat> Dan <clears throat> mentioned. As at the time of the taping of this program, we don't have any snow yet, and I think a lot of us are glad to see the, the shovel still collecting dust in the garage. <laughs> Many of us are hoping for a white Christmas, and the snowmobilers and skiers I know are anxious mm -hmm. to get out. Uh, you're gearing up. You've been gearing up for the snow and, and the weather conditions that we're going to be dealing with soon. Tell us a little bit about what it takes to gear up for snow plowing and salting. Well, it's, it's, it's interesting in that... Uh, the way we're set up with the, with the utilization of equipment, for example, the trucks that we use for hauling gravel and asphalt, uh, you always, we, we extend that as far as we can and still allow time to, uh, to mount the snow plows and the wings and the sanders. Uh, so usually about the middle of November, we would like to have that transition all made uh, uh, to be able to set the, the things up for, for snow. Fortunately, this year, we've been able to extend the construction season a little bit and, 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 and get some additional call it ditching and some, some other uh, earth-moving things uh, taken care of uh, this year. Uh, and of course, uh, the money we we're saving on salt and whatnot is, is certainly going to help the, help the year-end budget. Now you mentioned earlier about 450 county roads, That's correct. miles of county road, and out of 15 100 miles of road in the county, mm -hmm. about 1,100 are serviced or maintained by the county highway department. That's correct. How many snow plows will you have operating at any one time or at least ready to get out there when, when we get the okay. snow? Well, keep in mind now that, that 1,100, 1,150 miles that we maintain, that's just one way. And so, you know, you've, you've got to double that. And on, like on the I system and for on the four lanes, of course, you have to take that times four. So that's a, it's a large amount of miles that, each, uh, that the guys have to cover. Now, generally, uh, uh, we have, uh, the normal shift is 7 to 3.30. And, and of course, we're, you, you're staffed basically for one shift. Uh, but when it comes to, let's just take an average snowfall, for example, if you want to call an average like one to two inch, uh, that would, we have 37, uh, call them plows, sanders, uh, that go out on, on, that cover this amount of miles. And uh, just, uh, and hopefully, it, it would be nice if it would just snow, and then you could plow it off, and you'd be all done, you could go home. But we all know the different conditions, the wind and, and the temperature. You might have rain that turns to ice, which turns to snow and back again. So, but uh, to use an average, say it for six, uh, six hours, seven, eight hours to come in and do it once and go home, yeah, it runs about fifteen thousand uh, dollars in in order to to do that in in that one shift of, of a one to two inch snowfall. <coughs> Excuse me, you mentioned thirty seven plows mm -hmm. and sanders combined. Yes. And if we get a one to two inch snowfall, and I'm sure people don't have any appreciation <laughs> for what that costs county taxpayers, fifteen thousand dollars a shift. Yes. To get out there and start clearing. Yes. 
I'll be darned. Now, if we have a, a larger storm where you have to, you know, wing the snow back or push the snow back, we have, we have 12 graders which we w would take out in, in addition to that, uh, which and then times the, uh, the amount of time it takes to, to keep the roads open and, and you know provide safe travel for the, for the public. And of course, when it gets real bad, we still have some of the, the heavy duty trucks, uh, say that what we call the Oshkosh four wheel drives. They're still there that. Uh, are, can be used for the severe drifting and and the uh, and the clogged roads. Fortunately, we haven't had too many of those in the last number of years. Now we're getting some real relief in the month of November, December, with uh, no snowfall to date. But on an annual basis, approximately, what are you budgeting to to take care of the winter season? Yeah. It, it it'll all average out, uh, but uh, on an average, about 1.1 million. Is what the if you, if you historically you go back through through time it'll average about 1.1 million. 1.4, the equipment, the the staffing, yeah. the salt. Correct, labor machinery materials. That's what about correct. just salt alone? Salt alone, uh, we purchase on an average of about 10,000 ton of salt each year. Now keep in mind that's for not just the county roads but all of the mm -hmm. roads that we serve, except the state. The state purchases their own. And that costs about $275,000 a year just for salt. How, how's our salt supply looking for this, this winter thus far? Very good. No it, problem getting a hold of it? No, in fact, we, uh, for example, we bid our salt with the state of Wisconsin, and they go out to bid in June. So the salt went up a little bit, uh, but not as extreme that I've learned in some of the other counties and areas of the state. We were fortunate, uh, dovetailing on with the state of Wisconsin, and. We had our, our salt sheds uh, filled up in uh, September, October, so uh, we haven't had to open the doors yet. So when your crews are out there working the roads, and, and I know that can be some dangerous work, especially at night or when there's a lot of traffic, what are some of the common concerns that, that they have? Well, I, would, I wish I could get some of the public to, to, to travel with, for example, the plows that are on I-43. Uh, the amount of traffic, uh, the speed of the traffic, um, it's 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 dangerous up there, you know. On the, with, with the plow driver, you know, he's driving, he's shifting, is a wing and a plow, and you know we we have a lot of lights on the on the vehicles, but but just because you know the, the snow that comes off of the plow, you know the the, the snow cloud that comes off and everything, um, it's uh, it's hazardous up there. But the worst for the drivers is, is I mean for the our drivers is the speed of the traffic. And uh, because the, the, if say we have to make turns and whatnot, um, it's 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 hard for them to make their maneuvers sometimes because you have traffic right on uh, coming right up behind you. It's it causes so speed and the volume is probably the worst. And uh, and of course backing is is another problem. When we have to clean up an intersection, you know, you, you just can't go around an intersection. You have to back up and do it once or twice because some of the larger <coughs> intersections and some, when people have, sometimes have a tendency to pull up right tight behind the snow plow mm -hmm. and the drivers just simply can't see them in, in their mirrors. Uh, How about mailboxes? I recently just put a new, <laughs> brand new mailbox up on a county road and, and I looked around at other mailboxes and how close or far they mm -hmm. are and what what happens out there with, with mailboxes? Is that generally a, a problem when removing snow or? The worst problem, it's, it's not so much that, that they get hit, but the force of the snow that comes off of the plow or the wing. Or if it's a wet snow, for example, and it rolls off the wing, that's a tremendous force uh, against the post and the mailbox. But I did give specific orders that the district garage rears are to stay w way away. Yeah. Don't, don't, so, the, don't the drivers put notches on their steering wheels for every every mailbox that they take down? Not that I'm going to admit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Something tells me I'm going to be replacing one this winter. So when your drivers are out there, you mentioned the speed of travel, people following too close. If you had some recommendations for our listeners, what would be some of the key things you would ask them to do to make sure that we get the snow removed quickly and safely? The biggest thing is, is, is patience, you know, um, especially on, on the two-lane roads and even the four-lane roads, you know, the plows will go, say, 25, 35 miles an hour, say 35 miles an hour. And, and if you consider, like, your destination is only, say, 10 or 12 miles, uh, have patience because that, that difference in time between trying to pass that plow 
and the actual time you get there is, is, is not that great. So it's patience, plus it's dangerous when, when you're passing because with these what I call whiteouts, so you, you just don't know what, uh, what's in front of, of you that's oncoming. So just simply patience and, and, in, and once again with our plows, be, you know, because you have to you know, plow one, one lane at a time, you, you, you still have to clear that center line. So when, you're, when a snow plow is approaching, just simply slow down uh, and let the plow go by rather than trying to maintain your speed. It's just patience I think is the best I can say. And as people approach intersections or strike out in the morning or home and they see a slippery intersection or have a concern, who do they call? Whose attention do they raise that to? The, the best is uh, like the, uh, most people will know the, the area, the uh, garage that uh, services them. Uh, the best is, is, is to call them if there's a problem. We work very closely with the county sheriff's department and say for example it's off hours or say before 7, after 3.30 type mm -hmm. thing that if there are problems to call the sheriff's department where we have, of course have radio contact uh, constantly and are talking all the time. It, where there are spots for example that, that have a problem and we have supervisors on call, we, we talk uh, all the time as far as locating these areas. and So area shed, sheriff's department, yeah. and then would you like to give your home telephone number as well? Uh, no, not at no, this time. I did, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Roger, very good. Uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about uh, construction projects that you do. I know we're, we're in, uh, in between seasons now. We finished mm -hmm. the, the construction season. But before we get into the construction projects, is, are there any laws, that traffic laws, that, that pertain to plows as far as passing or anything like that? Or, or, or should that be better asked to the Sheriff's Department? Well, there's one law that was just signed by the governor a day or two ago about uh, following snow plows, flow pl snow plow following law. And uh, I'm not exactly sure on, on the wording, how that's going to uh, shake out or how the enforcement or, or how difficult it's going to be to enforce that law. The way I understand it, uh, when a plow, let's use an example of like a two-lane road, where, uh, where the plow is going, uh, say, 30, say, 35 miles an hour, and, and, and you're right tight behind that plow for like, say, over a mile or more, I guess the idea was that, that it was for the safety of, of, the, of the individual that because of these whiteouts and whatnot that uh, you know, to stay back, I believe it's a distance of 500 feet to allow for that, that, that whiteout or whatever to, to dissipate before you uh, would pass. Mm -hmm. Passing a snow plow, for example, when you're plowing, you, you, it, you may have bare pavement for a while and then you have drifts across the road. And if you would attempt to pass a snow plow one time, it's clear, and it's sure enough, you're going to hit a the plow is going to hit a, a drift, and you're going to get that white out. It's so it's serious enough that they're starting to yes. possibly pass legislation to uh, to make it uh, harder to and, and more restrictive in passing plows. Correct. Okay, back to the construction uh, season. Uh, we've passed our budget. You pretty well have planned what you're going to do next year. Mm -hmm. Could you just maybe fill us in on a couple of the projects that uh, in the summer of 2002 that you'll be working on? Sure. Let me uh, talk about some projects that are around the county in, in, in addition to the, uh, the county work. I know one of the, uh, many of the viewers will note that State Highway 57 in the uh, south central part of the county from the Ozaki County line to Random Lake, what, the northbound lanes were reconstructed this past summer up to the village of Adel. Uh, the finish work or the final mat of blacktop will be put on that in 2002 and then they will pick up from where they left off at Adel and continue to rebuild the northbound lanes up to uh, the village of Walden. Uh, by the time it's all done I believe it's going to be about a eight mile stretch of the northbound highway 57 that, that will be rebuilt and then that will con uh, basically complete the the, uh, the the reconstruction of Highway 57 from when it was originally built in in the 19, late 1920s, early 1930s. So that's one of the big state projects <clears throat> for next year. That's a state project that you will not be involved with. Correct. Okay. Correct. Another uh, project next year, uh, which will involve the city of Sheboygan, uh, that I'm a little bit aware of, is the from uh, Highway 28 or Business 28. Uh, when you come in on the south side of Sheboygan. Uh, uh, Washington Avenue, 
uh, starting at Taylor Drive, going east uh, to uh, what we consider South Business and north up to about Union. That's, that's going to be, uh, they're going to mill and, uh, uh, the blacktop and some of its concrete and then put an asphalt overlay uh, on that, on those portions of the roadway. In anticipation of, I believe, the year after then, the segment of South Business from uh, Broadway, in the area of Broadway, uh, the Broadway overpass and whatever, that is, that's going to be constructed by the state DOT. Another uh, project that's, uh, that's what will be going on on a, on a county level next year, uh, County Road PP, uh, just west, or in, it's in the city of Sheboygan Falls from uh, Triple P or near Richardson Lumber, westerly past the Bemis Corporation to just past County Road TT. And that road is going to be rebuilt next summer. It's a it's a project. Um, there's federal funding in it, federal and state funding, and it's a joint project with the city of Sheboygan Falls and of course Sheboygan County. It's a County Road PP. Another uh, thing that will be rebuilt next year. Uh, if you're familiar out in uh, west of Sheboygan, uh, intersection of County Road O and Y, or which O is Superior Avenue and Y runs north out of uh, Kohler. Uh, we have a uh, also an, uh, a grant or, or some money, federal money coming in for signalization of that intersection. That's a high traffic area. Uh, Superior Avenue carries a tremendous amount of traffic out east-west out of Sheboygan. And then of course, County Y uh, feeds Kohler, Village of Kohler, Kohler Company running north and south. So we have a signalization project scheduled for this coming summer on, and at that intersection. In addition, the county forces will be constructing County Road V from I-43 westerly to State Highway 32 through what we know as Six Corners. Uh, that'll be, that's two and three quarters miles that uh, we will be also be rebuilding next year. So it's a, it's a, there's a, quite a few things going to be going on and in 2003 and four. What is the status on the, uh, the road by the airport? That's going to be, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming County Road O. Yes. That's going to be a 2003 project. Not uh, next year. Not okay. next year. That'll be 2003, and and that will that relocation of County Road O will accommodate the extension of the uh, I call it the north south runway uh, for the airport ultimately. Right. Another project that we've seen in the news for a long time, and and we'll, we will continue to see for a long time before we get completion is Highway 23. Mm -hmm. Could you just fill our listeners in a little bit as to um, what the status is of that project and, and what we can look forward to in the next few years? Sure. There's a couple different phases to that particular project. As you know, the four lanes of Highway 23 go to, uh, call it County Road OJ at this present time, and where the four lanes are. And the short, uh, the two projects, uh, the four lanes are scheduled to be extended from OJ to County Road P or just past County Road P. Uh, in about 2000, maybe late 2003, four, and possibly five, with the, with the budget the way it is, it very well could be 2005. And but the, the the bigger project, which was worked on by many local officials and businesses and chamber of commerce, was the ultimate four-lane extension to Fond du Lac. And there's been a lot of work done between the. The business people and the, and the and the community leaders in Sheboygan County and Fond du Lac County to uh, to have that four lane ultimate four lane extension of Fond du Lac uh, enumerated. It's uh, uh, that major project is is in its infancy right now. They're just going to be starting a, what we call a corridor study to look at uh, the proper uh, alignment for that ultimate four lane extension. And it, it ties in with ultimately the 151 bypass of Fond du Lac, which will be done earlier or sooner. This, uh, this ultimate four-lane extension of Fond du Lac is, they're discussing possibly uh, starting to buy right away or the design in 2008, and that could extend through like 2012. You mentioned a corridor study. Who actually does that study, and if uh, citizens want to give some input to that, uh, who would they talk to or, or, or how does that process work in deciding where that, where the actual highway is going to lay? Sure, what, what that entails is the, the Department of Transportation, uh, we had one initial meeting just to alert all the local units of government 
when they're planning their, their smart growth, putting together their smart growth plans, and ultimate uh, when people want to come in to build, to DOT has, has just now started to make them aware of, okay, this is probably going to be a, a viable project here. It's out there a number of years. But uh, keep this in mind w with your planning and, and give input to the Department of Transportation on, for example, what your plans are for along a quarter. Say, generally figure a quarter to be a mile either side of the existing alignment. And they want to solicit input from the local communities and the local citizenry as to any plans that they may have to give that information to the Department of Transportation. And, and that will certainly all part of consideration for ultimate alignment decisions. And taking into consideration wetlands or historical buildings or, <coughs> and once again, the growth of the local townships and communities. If a, if a citizen is interested or concerned about his property being adjacent to that or, or part of that corridor, uh, how will he be made aware of, of uh, when these meetings are? I assume there will be public meetings or public hearings on this. Certainly, yes. Uh, how, how would they find out about that? Well, I guess the, uh, a couple different ways. Uh, it, of course, if there are public meetings, it, it will be advertised in the, in the local uh, uh, papers and whatnot. But I would say either call uh, the, your local town chairman or, or any with the other municipalities, municipalities or myself, and I can uh, get you the numbers of uh, the people in, at the Department of Transportation that you can talk to and, uh, and give your input. As part of that uh, project on 23, we, uh, the intersection of C and 23 on the west side of Plymouth, uh, I know there's been some talk about uh, making an overpass there. Uh, what is the status of that and what's, going, what's probably going to happen there? Okay. Or, or, excuse me, originally, of course, the four lanes were going to be extended. And, in fact, all of the right-of-way is purchased uh, from years ago to extend the four lanes out past County Road P, like we had indicated. Um, because of the growth since the road was built originally, the, original, the two lanes that are there now, uh, there was a, basically an effort between, you know, local officials, uh, business people. Uh, they had a concern about the safety at, at, County, at County Road C and, and, and 23, and the amount of trucks going in, in, on and off Highway 23. And I, if you're familiar with that area, if a truck comes up the intersection and wants to come eastbound, there's a, there's a gradual climb up uh, on Highway 23. But the idea was to, in, in order to make a safer intersection because of the amount of traffic and the type of traffic, was the idea the local officials approached the Department of Transportation of what some alternatives were, uh, how to improve the intersection just other than being at grade. And so the uh, idea was developed about, about an interchange, or not, but ramps, and, uh, and then the various cost alternatives were put together, and then right now a decision's been made to proceed with that design. With, with the overpass. Well, thank you, Roger. We uh, have been prompted that we're down to less than a minute. We hoped we had hoped to get a segment in on Santa Claus in this section, but uh, we're not going to be able to do that. We'll have to hold that for next year, I guess. What a shame. Uh, we're all going to be disappointed with that. Uh, next month, we're going to have Terry Burke, our Family Court Commissioner, with us, and we'll be talking about his role as Family Court Commissioner. And we just thank you for, for uh, listening into our show, watching, and if you have any comments, please call my office, County Board Chairman, or the Administrative Coordinator's office. Uh, with questions or comments for future shows. Thank you.